And of course, you may have noticed uh, for the better part of the week, Leanne Manners hasn't been here. And that's because she's in the United Arab Emirates. And she's there for the International Government Communication Forum, which got underway in Sharjah yesterday. Now, Sharjah is the second most popular city in the UAE. That's after Dubai. And it is also host to this event, which was launched in 2012. And it focuses on and assesses how governments communicate matters of national interest to their citizens. So let's cross over now to Leanne for more. A very good morning to you from day two of the International Government Communication Forum for 2019. Today is the final day and uh, it really is a exceptionally well-organized event that has seen people from all over the world gather here to talk about different forms of communication and particularly how governments communicate to their people, the effective way of communicating. And this has been quite an eye-opener because I'm not sure that many governments are getting it right. but what is the right way? And that has been the question that's been asked by so many panelists and so many uh, different people that have attended. And I suppose, you know, one of the right ways of doing it is through education. And this is one of the interviews that we're going to be doing for you this morning, is the key to educating and how we educate well. And of course, more importantly, how we communicate with the youth. Are we doing it right or are we doing an awful job? Well, hopefully my guest can unpack some of this. This is something that he he specializes in and is going to talk to us about. His name is Mark Prensky. He's an author, he's a consultant, he's an innovator, uh, all in the field of education. It's so lovely to have you with us and welcome to South Africa's Morning Live. Well, it's a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to be with South Africa. So I, I suppose I posed a question into the camera. Are we doing a good enough job at educating our children in terms of the new way of communication? I don't think so. I don't think what I would like to see in the world is 8 million people, obviously all over the world, who are becoming the kinds of symbiotic human hybrids that people are becoming now, where they're putting the human side together, which is the dreams and compassion and passion, and the machine side together, which is the analysis and communication, and we're doing it in service of making a better world. And that's right now we're not doing that enough, I don't think. Yeah. You know, the reality is, is that when you look around the world, we're dominated by the youth. And yet, when you look at the upper leaders, they're not talking to the youth because they are of an older generation. So there's a big gap between the youth and our leaders. I mean, what, what, what are your views on that? I would say they're talking to them, but they're not talking with them. And they're really not listening to them. And they're not giving them any power. I think education has been for the adults. It's not for the kids. If it were for the kids, we would say, what kind of world do you have? What are your passions? What are your dreams? Let us help you get there. What the adults are trying to say is, no, we'd like to con continue what we think is good. And that's not going to work because the world is changing too fast. It really is changing out of the fastest way, and the youth are responsible for that. But let's, let's talk about it. So we're not doing a good job in communicating with them, but what should we be doing? How do we speak to the youth of today? When I give talks, I try to have a panel of kids, and I listen to them, and I say, tell me what's on your mind, tell me your dreams, tell me what you're thinking about, and then what, would, what can we do? And then I try to ask them specifically, what are the issues that they care about in the world? And how can they organize using their technologies to get together to make the world a better place, to take some of the issues that they see as problems and make them into solutions? Yeah. But I mean, okay, so, you know, we complain so much about our kids' heads buried in their phones the whole time. Uh, they, they live in this world of gaming. They live in this world of... of Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, obviously that is the way things are and we have to learn to, to get to them that way. But surely there's a fine line, surely there's got to be a balance somewhere. Well, it's hard. Did you leave your phone home so that you could do a better job at work today? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you, right. no, you didn't. We are hybrids now and we have to learn to not take it away but to work with it positively, to work with each other. We are all connected. We are extended minds all networked together. We just don't see people that way, but we could see people that way. And because the adults grew up in a very different world and they weren't networked and they weren't put together like this and they studied math and language and science and social studies, they think that's education. 
but that's not what education should be. Yeah. Education should be the kids starting to do project after project after project, real world impacting projects, so that when they grow up, they know they can improve the world. They know how to improve their world because that's been their education. Yeah. And the reality is, is that I suppose if you look at where we're at, and I mean, we, we do, we, you know, in, living in South Africa, I'm not sure if you know too much about South Africa and the way things are, but we have a very disgruntled youth and a youth that feel like the older generation, the leaders are not talking to them. And I know we addressed this in our, in our, in our introductory um, question, but again, if you could advise leaders and if you could advise them, because it is the youth that, that we need to talk to, that we need to leave our countries to so that they can do a better job. What is the advice that you do give to leaders? I would say empower kids. And what does empower mean? It means let them go do things, let them do projects that make the world better. Don't tell them what to do, don't tell them how to do it. That's treating them as pets. We treat our kids as pets. We need to treat our kids as empowered adults who have more capabilities in many ways than we do. And we have to guide them as mentors and as coaches to use what they have in order to make a better country, a better world, a better cities, and we can do that. And the country that does that first, that takes that perspective on kids as powerful, empowered people, and that says the goal is to improve the world, and that says the way to do that is through projects, the country that does that first is going to shoot up to the top. Who's a good example of a country that's doing that already? There is none so far. And, and now we have this idea that if you go do well in the PISA scores, you're going to do well. What we have is pockets emerging all over the world. So we have things like Design for Change. We have High Tech High in California. We different schools that are empowering the kids. And the kids are feeling it. I'm trying to curate this whole movement, and it's going to grow up alongside of the academic school movement, of the looking at kids as pets movement. It's going to be the empowered kids movement. And when that movement starts to take off, it's going to really make a huge positive difference in the world. All right, so Mark Wall, you basically, the message is the, the days are gone where children have to be uh, seen and not heard. They need to be heard now and very loudly, otherwise we're in trouble. And not just heard, but listened to and, and, and liberated to accomplish things that are positive. Thanks for talking to us.